Hi guys and welcome! If you're here, you're probably wondering how does photosynthesis work? What are the light reactions? And what's a thylakoid and why does it have a membrane? Well, I'm here to tell you all that today and more, so let's get started. Photosynthesis. It sounds hard, but really it's just making stuff with light. Now you might want to write down some of these steps in your notebook. Writing stuff down helps me remember everything, and using highlighters to color code works great. Now let's start with step one, photon leaches chloroplast. It all starts here with a photon, all the way from the sun, 94.5 million miles away, to find itself here in the thylakoid membrane, which is made up of phospholipids with their hydrophilic heads and hydrophobic tails. And we have photosystem 1 on the left, on the right, and photosystem 2 on the left, and ADP plus reductase, which I'm labeling right now. And we have ATP synthase, which is that oddly shaped complex of proteins right there. Now we're drawing in these little green dots that are much more than little green dots. They are molecules of chlorophyll, which reflect green light, so that's what makes plants green. The little square ones are special because they're in the reaction center. Right now I'm labeling this as the thylakoid membrane, just keep in mind that it's all happening in the chloroplast. The photon of light bounces from molecule to molecule until it reaches the reaction center. Now on to step two, electron boosting in photosystem two, which should be labeled photosystem two by the way, not photosystem one. The photon excites an electron in the reaction center of photosystem 2. If you're wondering why the first photosystem is called photosystem 2, it's because PS1 here on the right was discovered first, and then later on Robert Emerson and Eugene Rabinowitz discovered another photosystem which we know and love, photosystem 2. So back to the photosynthesis. The photon excites the electron in the reaction center of photosystem 2. This boosts the electron up and out and onto the electron transport chain. Now into step 3, splitting of water, or H2O. While the electron is at the top of photosystem 2, a molecule of water is split into one molecule of oxygen and is emitted as a byproduct, and two hydrogen protons. Protons accumulate on the inside of the thylakoid membrane, building up a gradient. Next on the step 4, the electron transport chain between photosystem 2 and photosystem 1. This is a system of proteins that bounce the electron all the way down to photosystem 1, into the reaction center. Next, on to step 5, reduction of NADP+. Now, once the electron reaches the reaction center of photosystem 1, it is excited by another photon of light and boosted into the second electron transport chain. It is caught by NADP plus reductase, which catches the electron at the end of this electron transport chain. The electron reduces, or adds an electron, to the molecule of NADP plus from the last time around the Calvin cycle by adding the electron from the transport chain. So the NADP plus becomes NADPH. The H is for hydrogen. That NADPH cycles on to be used in the Calvin cycle. Next step is chemiosmosis. There's now a steep concentration gradient of protons which have accumulated on the inside of the thylakoid membrane. This is all from photosystem 2, splitting of water. They begin to follow this gradient and exit through a protein embedded in the thylakoid membrane called ATP synthase. As the hydrogen protons pass through, following the gradient from high to low, they spin a part of ATP synthase called the rotor, which binds ADP to a phosphate group forming ATP, the power-packed chemical energy molecule. The light reactions are now complete. Now, if photosynthesis were a book, that was chapter one. Let's go on to chapter two, the Calvin cycle. But first, let's go over the products of the light reaction. So, what did we accomplish? We formed molecules of ATP, NADPH, and oxygen. The ATP can be used for energy using reactions like active transport, the oxygen is emitted through the stomata, and the NADPH is used for the Calvin cycle. Photosynthesis. It's a two-part process. We have the light reactions and the Calvin cycle. Now we already did the light reactions, so now on to part two, the Calvin cycle. Step seven, carbon fixation. 
we begin with three molecules of carbon dioxide, or CO2. They are fixed into six three-carbon sugars with the help of rubisco, another molecule. Each has a phosphate group attached to the end. These phosphates come from six molecules of ATP, donating one of their three phosphates, leaving them as ADP. The ATP came from the light reactions. The ATP left and goes back to the light reactions to become ATP again. The next step is step 8, reduction. Six molecules of NADPH from the light reactions each donate an electron to one of three carbon molecules, now called 3GP. One of these molecules leaves the cycle. And the NADPH cycle back to the light reactions as NADP+. Now that last step was step 8, reduction, because we were adding an electron, which reduces the charge of the three carbon molecule called 3GP. Now the ninth and final step is to regenerate Rubisco, or RUBP, for the next time around the Calvin cycle. The remaining five molecules of 3GP continue on the cycle. Three molecules of ATP each donate one of their phosphates to the five molecules, making them unstable enough that they form five carbon molecules, each with a phosphate attached, aka Rubisco. And there you have it folks, that completes photosynthesis. Let's review the products of the Calvin cycle. So what did we accomplish here? We generated molecules of ADP and NADP+, both for use in the light reactions. We also generated g 3 which can be used to make glucose or other sugars. The ADP and NADP plus can be used in the light reactions. Need a review? Return to the light reactions where they begin at 0 minutes 31 seconds or the Calvin cycle for 4 minutes and 48 seconds. Thank you very much for watching. Good luck on that test. Comment, like, subscribe. Bye.